Since I debuted the umbrella-based, squirrel-proof bird feeder over a year and a half ago, a lot of questions have been asked about how well it would hold up. Many viewers predicted it would fail almost immediately, either due to weather or by squirrels trying to outsmart this effective defense system. It had been through intense sun, wind, rain, sleet, and snow, and it had held up perfectly. However, its biggest challenge occurred a couple weeks ago when we had wind gusts officially exceeding speeds of 90 miles an hour. With all it's been through, would this bird feeder be able to withstand hurricane level winds? The short answer to that is no. Hi, this is Steve DeMossi and welcome to Uncharted DIY. For today's video, we're going to work on version 2.0, the high velocity wind version of the squirrel proof bird feeder. Make sure to watch to the end of the video to find out how this feeder held up in an even more powerful windstorm. I decided that extreme winds called for extreme measures, and since it had done so well up to this point, I wasn't ready to pull the plug on the original design. And here's why. It protects the birds from the heat, sun, rain, and snow, and provides a bit of shelter from the excipiter hawks that would love to use the feeder as a fast food drive through It's kept all the squirrels off the suet feeder and the seed feeder hanging below. The birds can eat the bird food and the squirrels can eat their food and everyone is happy. In extreme weather, the weak spots of the umbrella are the stretchers and the ribs. Lateral forces on these thin areas can be too much, causing the thin metal to buckle under the pressure. I wanted to reinforce the outer rim of the umbrella so the tips of the ribs are supported and prevented from being pushed inward or side to side. The simplest solution for me was to use PVC to make a strong reinforcing frame. It took about an hour and about $30 to make this heavy duty upgrade. Between the original squirrel proof bird feeder umbrella and this optional upgrade, it's about $50, but it's nearly impossible to find a 50 inch baffle anywhere. To make one, you'll need eight pieces of half inch PVC pipe, approximately 19 inches long for the spokes. 16 pieces of half inch PVC pipe, approximately seven and a quarter inches long for the outer ring. 8 half inch PVC 45 degree elbows, 8 half inch PVC T fittings, 2 half inch PVC cross fittings, cable ties or zip ties, a quick link connector, a saw for cutting the PVC. I used a miter saw, but a hacksaw works great too. A hammer, preferably a rubber mallet, and a tape measure and a pencil. I used a sparkly pencil but it would probably be okay if you use a plain one. Due to variances in umbrella measurements, I recommend cutting and test fitting the outer ring of the reinforcement frame first, then measure for the spokes based on the actual dimensions of the ring so it fits your umbrella. To start, cut the 16 short pieces. These mount on either side of the T-fittings on the ends of the spokes. Test fit them with the T-fittings and elbows to make sure they fit between the ribs of the umbrella. Next, drill holes through the centers of the cross connectors. On mine, these were slightly larger than half inch in diameter, so it fit the umbrella shaft snugly. Then, four of the spokes are attached to each of the cross connectors. These are tapped with a mallet to tighten them. Test fit them first, because with these tapped in, it's very difficult to take them back apart. With the spokes attached, add the outer parts of the frame. Once assembled and painted, the completed reinforcing frame is slid onto the shaft of the umbrella. The ribs of the umbrella are then attached to the 45 degree elbows with cable zip ties. With the umbrella firmly attached, long zip ties are looped loosely around the cross connectors. Then, more zip ties are attached to those, again looped loosely. These feed into the connector that joins the cable zip ties to the wire cable rope. Finally, I cinched one more cable tie around the shaft and the zip tie loops. 
This transfers the weight of the umbrella and the suet feeder directly to the wire cable rope, so the thin umbrella stretchers aren't stressed by carrying any weight on their own. Finally, I modified my hanging system. I wanted a quick way to be able to take down the whole umbrella feeder and make it easier to raise and lower and have the umbrella tip dock in the T-fitting attached to the tree. The old way had the wire run underneath the tree branch so the wire couldn't abrade the bark. For the new one, I used a leftover piece of the half-inch PVC tubing and bent it with a heat gun. This follows the arc of the tree branch top providing an easy path for the wire to move without injuring the tree bark. Because the wire rope now runs parallel to the long umbrella tip, it engages with the T even with only one person doing the raising and lowering. The suet feeder now hangs from the PVC frame, so taking it down for refilling is quicker. To take the whole system down, the wire rope is simply detached from the connector. Just a few days after installing this high-velocity wind-speed version of the squirrel-proof bird feeder, we had another day of extreme winds, this time clocked at well over 100 miles per hour. The force of the wind caused the T-fitting to separate from the new hanging system, and the seed feeder that hangs beneath the suet feeder ended up on the ground bent, but the umbrella came through completely unscathed. This heavy-duty reinforcement passed this test by withstanding the brutal onslaught and is still perfect. I'd count that as a success. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe.